starting our F-16, we're going to go to the left-hand side just below the throttle to the electrical panel. We're going to flip the switch to turn our power to main power. We're going to go up to the radio panel, flip the power to the radio to main, and then we're going to flip the channel setting to preset. Then we're going to go to our engine starting. We're going to go to the jet fuel start switch and flip it to start two. Gives us a more reliable start. Then we're going to transition to our engine cluster. Over here, we're going to monitor the RPM, wait for it to hit tw around 20%. Then we're going to look at the warnings panel and wait for the secondary engine light to turn off. Once those both have happened, we can move our throttle into idle. Bef doing before that before the secondary engine light turns off will get you a hung start on your engine. So that is extinguished now, so we can go to the throttle, flip that up to idle. And I'm going to go ahead and close the cannon. See that closing and lock. See the RPM is spooling up, the FTIT is raising. And once we hit 60% about here, we'll see uh, gauges and things turn on. There's our lighting. So we can go to the right hand side to our avionics panel, flip all of these switches turning on our avionics, flip, turn on mids, data link, GPS, and initiate our INS alignment by flipping it to stored heading. Then going up to our sensor powers and turning our radar altimeter standby, our FCR on, and then we can turn our right and left hard points on if we have an HTS pod or a target pod. And we, when we go up to here, we'll go to our right MFD, turn XMIT to link 16 from off, and we'll roll our standby attitude indicator on to on Cajun. Then we'll go to the ICP on the left hand side, roll the symbology to turn the HUD on. We're going to go left hand side to our threat warning panel. We'll turn, press the power there to turn on our RWR. Flip jammer and RWR on the countermeasures page uh, panel. And then flip on chaff flares. And then we'll take the mode from off up to semi or as desired. And then right below it we'll take our genomics and roll the symbology on. And then we can see the genomics. Then on the left hand, far left hand side we'll go to our IFM. F panel here, flip that to norm, and then we'll initiate our FCS bit test. And we'll, it will check all our flight control systems. You can see it externally as they start to move. Up and down. And I'll run through that check. And we'll wait for our INS alignment. We're going to be waiting for that page to hit 1.5 minutes and then a 10 on the status quality. You'll see now that it says ready is flashing and a line is flashing on the HUD. Those two and the 10 quality is an indication that your INS alignment is complete. So we'll go ahead and go to the INS here and we'll flip this to nav. And then once we have it to nav, it's no longer aligning and we can dauber, take the dauber on the ICP to return to get out of the INS page go to list zero and R for the helmet mounted queuing system page. We'll take the dauber to sequence to get over to the alignment. We'll press zero when it's over course. We'll go ahead and align the two crosses on each other and then press the cursor enable switch. And it will initiate aligning. You'll get aligning OK. And then you can press zero on the ICP again to go to the next one zero to check the alignment. You want those to be relatively dead on to each other, so we can move these with the radar cursor slew. And get that perfectly aligned there. Go ahead and hit zero again. Zero one more time for the roll. Roll looks pretty good to me. Hit zero one more time. We're done with that alignment. Alright, now all we got left is the ejection seat. We'll flip that on. Cat 3 since we have some heavier munitions on and then up on our taxi light and finally our nose wheel steering and we are ready to taxi.